This is an update to a video that I did called Setting Up the Arduino IDE so that you can program the AT8085. In that video I suggested using the SparkFun programming board. However, since then I have had nothing but trouble with this. I've had to install the Arduino IDE twice and it seems that the driver just keeps failing and it won't recognize this board. Well, you know, I want to program the devices I don't want to spend my time in troubleshooting the programmer. So what I've done is change this out to a different method. Now if you bought one of these on my recommendation and it still works, then there's no reason for you to change, continue to use this. But for some reason on my computer, I had a lot of trouble. So what I went with, and what really seems to work flawlessly, is programming the AT1095 using another Arduino, which is here, an Arduino Uno. And I'll provide the link to the Arduino website that shows you how to wire this up. And it's very simple. All you need is a few wires and a capacitor. And then you connect the Arduino Uno to your computer. And then the computer uses the Uno to program the AT1085. And one advantage to this approach is you can use the Arduino Uno for other things when you're not programming the AT1085. Now this is all well and good. If you're doing a lot of these, it's kind of a pain to set this up. And all this is is just a breadboard with a Arduino Uno. So I custom built this shield. And the circuit board is from Osage Park, where I do a lot of my circuit board work. And it just consists of uh, three different IC sockets. So in addition to the AT1085, you can program virtually all the other AT1080 type devices. It's got a couple of LEDs for status. And here is the uh, capacitor that's required. And the way this works is you just get an Arduino and basically you just plug this in to the Arduino's header and then you have a dedicated programmer. You put the AT1085 in here, you plug this in to your PC and then you can program it. Now you have to upload some code to the Arduino and I'll show you how that's done. But this has been flawless so far. I've not had any trouble at all on like this SparkFun board. And this costs $20 for the SparkFun. And this board here will cost you $25 to build, but you can build three of them. That's because at OSH Park you got to buy these circuit boards in quantities of three. However, these are so highly prized, you could build three of them and sell two of them on eBay for, you know, 15 bucks a piece or more, and you could recoup your money. And so I highly recommend, if you're having trouble with this, and if you're going to be doing a lot of these AT1085 projects, you have to go with this. However, again, you can just use this board, and if you're not doing a lot of them, it's going to work out okay. And as promised, here's a link to programming the AT1085 using an Arduino Uno. And when we follow the link to the web page on the Arduino website, we see a pretty comprehensive set of instructions. And as we scroll down, it shows you the components that are needed, which is a Arduino Uno, the AT1085, of course, a 10 microfarad capacitor and some jumper wires. And here's a review of the project and kind of tells you step by step on how to set up the Arduino IDE and shows you how to set up the Arduino IDE to recognize an AT1085. And then finally it gives you the pins that you have to connect between the UNO and the AT1085. And at the end of the page we even have a little test program to make the AT1085 blink an LED. And here it shows how you can make the programmer into a shield, which is essentially what I did with the OSH Park shield. So you can build your own like this, or you can buy the circuit board that I designed from OSH Park and make your own that way. And once we've connected the computer to the programmer, we want to go to Tools, and we want to go to Board AT Tiny. I want to make sure it shows AT1080. Under processor, we want to make sure it's AT1085. Under the clock, we want to make sure it says 8 MHz internal. And then we want to click on burn boatloader. 
and we only need to do that once for every new chip that we use. Next we want to actually upload this program so then we go back to tools and we want to change this to Arduino as ISP and the port will be different depending on this is a Mac and if you have a PC it'll have a COM port on it so then what we want to do is make sure that we're on the right COM port then we want to go to sketch upload and it's going to be again a little different on the PC or we can click on the upload button here it'll compile a sketch and eventually it'll upload it. 